I'm Tom Merritt from Daily Tech News Show. Here are five things to know about RSS. An RSS feed powers podcasts, lists of news articles, and so much more. It's that little orange icon that sometimes shows up in the browser. It's... What is it really? Here are five things to know about RSS. Number five, there's not an exact answer to what it stands for. Generally, people say it stands for really simple syndication. Kind of makes sense. It may have first stood for RDF site summary. And in 1999, some folks argued it should stand for rich site summary. But Dave Weiner wrote at the time, there is no consensus on what RSS stands for. So it's not an acronym, it's a name. Coming in at number four, Netscape had a key role in its adoption. For my Netscape, one of the first portals, it used OpenSPF so that anyone publishing their headlines and links could show up on my Netscape. OpenSPF eventually became RSS. Up to number three, the New York Times also played a part in RSS's longevity. RSS 2.0 was released by Dave Weiner's Userland in September 2002, and in November of that year, the New York Times adopted it. A lot of other publications followed suit, and it's still there. Sliding in at number two, you might think you're using RSS, but instead you're using Atom. Atom was developed as a new syndication format to address some shortcomings in RSS. It was proposed as an internet official protocol standard in December 2005, and it's still used right alongside RSS. At number one, Mozilla's Stephen Horlander designed the web feed icon. That's that little orange box. He did it for Firefox in 2005, which Microsoft and Opera eventually adopted as well. It's used for both Atom and RSS feeds. I mean, you don't really need to know what RSS is to use it in your feed reader or your podcast app, but it's helpful to understand what it is, right? Hey, we've got a whole episode diving into the history of RSS if you want that at knowalittlemore.com. And if you want more great tech news and info, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash dailytechnewsshow, and get the podcast at dailytechnewsshow.com. I'll see you there.